Over the years, Blender has grown to become one of the most powerful 3D software around. There is no doubt about that. But one area where it still has major flaws is its scattering system. It's boring, limited, and not good enough for most projects. And as a way to address this long-lasting issue, we'll discuss a bunch of paid and free add-ons to help you improve your scattering experience and save time and effort. Let's kick things off with GeoScatter, an add-on that probably declares itself as the ultimate scattering solution for Blender. Well, it's up to each one of us to either agree with that or not, but let me tell you, it comes with enough tools and features to back up that claim. Surprisingly, there are so many of these set features to the point where we can't cover all of them in this video. But in short, it is an add-on that allows you to scatter any object on any surface using its powerful geometry node system. And while that might sound complicated, it is in reality very simple to use, which we could see through its user interface. First, the add-on is divided into a menu of small sections, and the main ones we are interested in are the three menus we scatter objects with, which are density, preset, and manual. Density lets us choose the objects and click a button to scatter them randomly. Preset offers us the ability to choose a theme, like a forest, and distributes objects in a way that matches the thumbnail image. And then manual, which allows us to paint the objects where we want them to be. But also we have a never-ending list of cool features. We have a tweaking section, where we can, for example, build multiple scattering systems that can influence each other, like a layer for grass and one for flowers, along with various scattering methods and endless ways to change how it looks, from simple ones like adjusting their scale and rotation to more advanced options like the creation of transitions between your scattered elements, which is fantastic. It also features a wind system and collections upon collections of assets, including free ones, as well as different ways to make your scatter systems interact with other 3D models in your scene. Please keep in mind that we are only touching the tip of the iceberg here, because like I said, it has way more tools and features. A lot of Blender users are using GeoScatter, but a lot of them as well are choosing Botanic, which is a complete library of different trees and plants, as well as a powerful scattering toolset to distribute this collection around. So what is this package? Botanic comes with a system similar to the density scatter of GeoScatter. You can for instance pick a field such as a sunflower, dry grass, or even snow. And just like that, you can distribute the objects around your surface, in addition to the expected editing abilities that we usually find on this type of add-ons. For example, we have small panels to adjust the size and rotation. Based on that, you might be thinking that this is not so impressive. This might be true to a certain extent, but what makes this stand out is its library. Let me explain. It comes with an adjustment menu, where we can change the look of the assets however we want. Let's take a tree for example. We can change the season of the leaves like summer and fall, or play with the colors to match the vibe of the scene that we are going for. Maybe brighter leaves if we want something cheerful, or darker for a horror type of project. It also has an easy to use animation system to quickly create realistic movements of the assets. In their most recent update, they have added 53 assets, 17 grass, 9 succulents, 11 shrubs, 5 plants, and 11 deciduous assets. With a full library of 723 assets in total, but you can choose a license depending on how many assets you want, whether it be starter, light, or full. Next we have GScatter, a free and powerful layer-based scattering add-on. First, let's address the elephant in the room. Compared to the other add-ons in today's video, it's honestly not the best, but for a free tool, I'm honestly surprised with how amazing it is. So let's check it out. For starters, it is divided into three panels, the emitter, a self-explanatory menu where we can scatter different systems on top of each other, and then we have the effects layer and the optimization layer for the different camera settings as well as a small library button to choose from the assets that come with it, such as IVs or green moss or loading our own assets. And now for the effects layer, basically the one where the money is at, and it is divided into four parts, 
which are distribution, scale, rotation, and geometry. Within these, we have the generic editing capabilities that we are used to, but also the ability to add effects that change the behavior of the scattered objects. For example, in a grass field, making some parts have more grass than others. Now, we also have Grass Blade, which is an add-on that introduces itself as one of the ultimate add-ons for grass scattering for Blender. And what can I say? They actually have a case. And interestingly enough, it is based on the geometry node technology of GeoScatter. So if you want more options when it comes to scattering, then you probably should go with GeoScatter itself. But wait, Grass Blade is not popular and have a high rating for a reason. So in addition to its scattering capabilities, it gives us control of over 550 high quality assets that we can distribute with the help of over 200 different presets of vegetation environments such as cotton fields, flowers, and grass. And just like the other add-ons of this category, we have all the expected editing capabilities such as editing density, scale, and rotation which are gathered in a simple side panel. But the difference this time around is that you don't have to stop there because you can also edit the textures since each asset comes with a well-designed node group. For further adjustment, we can also personalize your scenes with manual vertex painting mode. But the next feature is probably gonna be the most impressive for a lot of people. And this is a problem that a lot of people face when using foliage and vegetation in general, which is the fact that they are very heavy and require a beast of a computer to run smoothly. So the way this add-on gets rid of this is by using a proxy system that replaces the shapes of your scattered objects in the viewport to edit them more easily. Next we have Begapi. The cool thing about this one is that the tools themselves are totally free and with the ability to buy the asset packs down the road. But here's the thing, it is not exclusively a scattering tool because it covers multiple aspects of 3D work such as modeling and generators which you can check out in our previous videos about Blender add-ons. But today, we are focusing on scattering. So Backupi offers a big but very clean side panel, which features most of what we already mentioned in this video. You know, the density, rotation, scaling options, and so on. We can also use a texture to pick where the objects are scattered. And if that is not enough, we can also switch to the manual weight painting mode and the use of proxy in the viewport to help with performance, which is great. Last but not least, we have II Scatter, which is a budget-friendly add-on by a developer who said that he has been scattering objects for more than 20 years. And this tool serves as a project or a tool that showcases his experience, including favorite features and workflows. This time with this add-on, we have to work directly through the geometry nodes interface. And while having its proper interface could have been better, I find the tool to be still well organized and easy to work with because it comes in form of one simple to understand node. It offers a lot of nice features and we can cover all of them in this video, but we have for example, the ability to pick the minimum and maximum level of the height of the scattered objects or their distance, and even using random rotation and scaling as well as manual weight painting or placing the objects with proxies in the viewport like the other add-ons. But this one has a unique approach which some people might find interesting. So guys, if you are interested in one of these add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.